Hello, I'm Rome from the Tar Hub, and this video will be covering the ISTA 360 ONE RS. So, the Insta360 camera will be located in the GoPro bag. This comes with all of the kit needed to use the 360 camera. This includes the selfie stick, the Insta360 camera itself, followed by a charging cable, as well as the microfiber cleaning cloth. To use the camera, you'll want to locate the power button on the right side of the device. Hold this power button to 3-5 to five seconds to power on the device. Just like any other piece of equipment, you'll want to format the SD card. You do this by swiping down on the screen, going to settings, find an SD card and selecting format SD. Then, to return, simply press the back arrow twice, swipe up, and you'll be back onto the screen. You'll then want to swipe left to choose the shooting mode you'll be using for the 360 camera. The first mode we have is burst mode, which will take a series of photos. The second mode is star lapse, which allows you to record the night sky as long as there's little light pollution. The third mode is interval, so you can set a duration of time and how many photos will be selected in that time. HDR photo allows you to take photos in very low light. You have your regular shooting photo mode. You have your shooting video mode. You have time lapse, which will take a number of photos during a set duration. You will have time shift, which is slow-mo or fast motion on a video and loop recording, which will loop your recordings as you're filming. For this, I will just be setting it to regular video mode. From here, you'll want to select the type of format you're shooting in by selecting the box at the bottom. There's 3K, 4K or 6K. I'd recommend shooting in 6K, however you can shoot in lower quality to lower your file size. Getting over to the actual shooting now, you'll want to remove the lens cover. And then on the right side, there's a nice big record button. You select this and the camera will start recording. To then stop recording, simply hit the record button again and it will save your footage to the SD card. To view the footage, swipe up and select the video clip. You'll also be able to see the whole 360 by simply swiping around. A great way to use the Insta360 is with the mobile companion app. Simply go to your app store, download the Insta360 app and you'll have full access. This is great because it allows you to take videos without you being inside the frame and it gives you a little bit more control and easier access to all of your footage. Once on the app, select the bottom to discover a new device. For me, this is already connected to the camera, but if you just wait a while with your Bluetooth enabled, the camera should pop up at the bottom. Simply tap to wake up or tap to select the camera. From here, it will connect and ask to join the Wi-Fi. That also might be a firmware update. If you then accept the firmware update and then press accept, the camera will connect to your phone. From here, you can see I've got a successful connection. So the camera will now load onto my phone and I'll be able to use all of the camera settings from my phone. At the bottom, you can change the mode just like you can on the camera. You've got your big red record button and to the left of that you can also see any footage you've recorded. Here I'm just playing around with the camera, I've got it in photo mode, spinning it around and then I'm going to place it back on the desk and then use the phone to then take a photo. And as easy as that I now have a photo, I can view this by selecting the left on my phone and it will load up. I can also access all of the 360 functionality on my phone, which is great to see before I put it in the edit. Now, you'll be wanting to attach the 360 camera to either a selfie stick or the Manfrotto tripod we have. The selfie stick is the first option we're going to be using and this allows someone to walk around an event 
while holding the camera, but essentially have the camera on a still platform while having the stick remain invisible. To do this, we're going to turn the camera upside down and screw it in from the bottom. Now we can pull the stick out and we can go either smaller or taller just so we can get more of a 360 angle. And as you can see, now that I'm in the edit, the stick is automatically removed by just plugging the SD card from the camera into the computer. For more stable work, you'll want to attach the Insta360 camera to the Manfrotto tripod by first attaching the base plate. Then, with the long side of the base plate, release the locking latch and place the base plate onto the tripod. What this allows us to do is record the video on a very small tripod so we can easily remove this in the edit. And lastly, to remove it on the tripod, press the release hatch and drag the latch back and then lift up. Now I'm going to cover how to take apart the camera to reach the SD card and charge the camera. To do this, we want to grab the two buttons on the side of the camera. Simply push in and pull and remove the lens from the top part of the camera. Then locate the USB panel on the side of the camera. Open this and then slide the rest of the device up out of the sleeve. From here you'll have access to both the battery and the screen part of the camera. If you disconnect the battery from the screen, you'll be able to turn the screen upside down and locate the micro SD card. To remove this, simply press in and it will pop out. Remove the SD card and then place into a card reader. This allows you to transfer the footage straight from the SD card to the computer. As for the battery, you can plug in a USB Type-C into the bottom and then plug this into a plug socket to charge. This should take around two hours to charge the battery to full. And lastly, to reassemble, simply attach the screen the same way you disassembled it. Then put the sleeve back on and close the USB-C charging port. Then grab the lens and place this on the top, connecting the two connecting points together. And the Insta360 camera has been reassembled. So here I've taken my SD files and put them on my computer and I'm just going to open this up in the Insta360 Studio app which you can find on Insta's website. Here this will load my clip and automatically put the 360 effect into motion. So now I can move through the timeline but also adjust the angle of the camera so I can look around the full 360 degree view to see what the camera's seeing. So there are plenty of great tools that could be used on this application. For the first one, I'm just going to show you the snapshot feature, which allows me to take a quick screenshot of my editor. There's also the aspect change, so I can change the aspect ratio of the edit, which can provide either a square or more rounded view. This is great if I wanted to port to different devices, so the 1 by 1 aspect ratio would be great for a mobile, where the wider 2 by 35 would be great for a computer. The next button is the deep track located at the bottom just above the timeline. This allows me to track an object, so I'll just draw a simple shape. For this I'm just going to use the chair in front of me, and it will automatically start tracking that as I play along. So the camera will always track on to that area by looking at similar shapes. And it's really great if I just want to make sure the audience sees something rather than have the 360 degree view. The next button is time shift and what this allows me to do is speed up a certain segment of time on the timeline so I can fast forward through irrelevant parts of my 360 degree video. On the right side we have more tools such as the stabilization type. If I deactivate certain stabilizations it means that it will follow what the camera was like on the day rather than automatically tracking a direction. So here I'm just turning it on and as you can see the camera will always follow where I've left it so it won't try and like bob around if I've moved the camera in real life. The next tab is for stitching. Now I would leave this alone because the software does an amazing job but if you have a massive error, say if I was more half stitched together, you could rectify this but it's wiser to leave this alone. 
Next we have media processing, which is just your audio, followed by moving over to the logo settings. Now the logo settings can be important. Uh, it just adds a little logo where the bottom of the camera would be. So this will be great for tripod use. But as you can see for the selfie stick, we don't actually have anything we need to hide. So I'm just gonna leave this on non for now. The next tab underneath that is your project management. So if you wanna create a new clip, just hit a new project. The next feature is really important and that's your trim and trim out located just above the timeline. This allows me to crop down certain times of the timeline so I will only export that bit. So if there's an error or there's something I don't want to show the audience and I just want to focus on one part of the clip, I'll just trim these two down. Now the last button is the export button located in the bottom right by the timeline. What this allows us to do is to take the video and any edits we've made to it and just export this out. So I'm going to change the file location. I would generally change the file location of anything to somewhere where you've got enough storage or you can keep it all together. Now another thing to notice, if you need to make any other changes such as colour grading or you're clipping these together, you can export this to Premiere and you can do similar sort of effects. You just have to install the plugins for Premiere Pro. And that's everything to the 360 Insta camera. I hope you found this useful and informative for your future practices.